Hello and welcome to Streets of Gotham, an ongoing Blades in the Dark game following a crew of Gotham City rogues. We're playing a simplified version of Blades in the Dark with a special Gotham City playset. Uh, I'm your game master and producer this evening, David, he, him. I'm a graphic designer, an illustrator, and a game designer. You can check out my tabletop RPGs over at dbb-8.itch.io. I'm also on Instagram and Twitter, at Brunel Brutman. And with that, uh, as we have already had some significant tech delays this evening, let's jump right in and introduce our players. We're going to start with Maddie. Hello, uh, everyone. I am Maddie. Um, I am an illustrator, gamer, uh, MFA student at the Fash Fashion Institute of Technology, um, and my pronouns are they, them. Tonight, I will be playing... I almost said David. Am I good? <laughs> um, I will be playing David. No, I'll be playing Ed. Um, Interesting. Ed Shannon. Yes, a... Um, Freelance hacker, average white dad, um, and, uh, you know, about to be traumatized by a scarecrow, sad man. Um, really excited, really excited to get into it. So, and his pronouns are he, him. Classic. Let's go over to Marcy. Hey, everyone. Uh, I'm Marcy, aka Experiments with Madness, which is the username you can find me most places around the internet, except for Twitter where I shall remain the resident cryptid, but technically you can find me there under the username Merciful. Um, I'm back playing uh, your favorite local hit woman, Jackie Ripley. Uh, she's having a great time in Arkham, and by that I mean she's half catatonic, uh, but let's see if we can make her even worse. Great, that's a laudable <laughs> goal. Let's go over to Pooja. Hello, everybody. I am Pooja. My pronouns are she, her, and I am back playing Manny Quinn, also she, her, and wife to Harley Quinn. And uh, I guess one of the only people in here not having a terrible time. Well, at least until before the end of the last episode. For now. All right. And Hopper, bring us home. Hey, that's me. What's up, everybody? I'm Hopper. I'm a professional arborist and game master based out of Brooklyn, New York. And my pronouns are they, them. And tonight I'm returning as Ollie, the um, vroom vroom escape person. My brain uh -huh. just shut down. Halfway yeah, that's your, that's your the vroom, vroom, that's vroom, vroom, that vroom vroom guy. <laughs> vroom vroom. Yeah. Ollie's the vroom vroom, vroom one. Um, that always wear sunglasses when they can because they have cool eyes and gives me an excuse to wear sunglasses at night nice. like an asshole. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so that, that that's... I, I'm going to be fine. This is he, fine. I'm he, going, going to break this annoying little fey prince man in, in, in repeatedly in the face. He, here's my question. If Ollie Which is the vroom one... Vroom one What? Uh, no, what? please, please go ahead. Scarecrow, which what's the other one? We we've all There's decided a... that Scarecrow is as played by Killian Murphy, correct? <laughs> There's some <laughs> options. Yeah, we we definitely discussed this and decided that. Yeah. Oh, I remember yeah. that. <laughs> but my question was if was if Ollie's the vroom vroom one, what are the rest of us? Freelance when... hacker. The clickety bang, bang. clackety. Yeah, yeah I, want, I want the clickety clackety, bang bang, and <laughs> flippity flappity. <laughs> flippity flappity. Well, that's better than the one I, I was thinking, which was the boing boing one. Uh, <laughs> too soon for me to Um, uh, yeah, I, I used to work for the Riddler. Then I decided that wasn't enough crime and sort of moral badness, so I went to work for an insurance company. Um, and then that was a little too much, you know, stealing old people's life insurance funds. Um, so, so now I just, I work, I, I do freelance, freelance, uh, cyber freelance crime. crime, freelance crime. Yep. Freelance crime. Well, uh, Ed, speaking of your freelance crime, we are going to get started with you. Oh boy. Yeah. Hmm. It's late afternoon. And we see orange light streaming through the gothic windows of a wood-paneled office. Uh, we see an older man with 
glasses and a gray goatee in a white doctor's coat sitting in a wingback chair. Uh, on the walls, framed psychiatry degrees, licenses, and facing this doctor, we see Ed sitting uh, in this room in your Arkham Asylum issued striped scrubs. Uh, Ed, where are you sitting in this psychiatrist's office? Uh, couch? Um, are you on the chair? Are you lying on a, a divan, classical analyst style? Yeah, I was going to say in, in his lap, but I think maybe the couch <laughs> is probably... Uh, yeah, I don't I'm, know if Ed has quite that degree of no, chaotic energy. No, no. Uh, well, it's just a dream, just a dream. But no, um, I think Ed is sit laying in the classical pose with his arm behind his head, just kind of looking up at the ceiling. Um, and, you know, he's he'd just say, so, Doc, uh, what can I do you for? Is there anything I can say to convince you I'm not crazy? Well, Edward, I, I don't think you're crazy, of course. That is a very crude way of putting it. Uh, you have certain uh, mental uh, blocks, uh, certain issues that uh, you are here at the asylum to work through. Right, and, uh, right. I hope that uh, in these sessions we can do that. Um, so where, where should I start? You know, when, when I was born, uh, you know, when uh, my, my, my dad got cancer, um, or, oh God, my mom got cancer. <laughs> I know the difference. Um, don't write that down. I can see writing. Um, but uh, he, yeah, he, he's just scribbling away as you're saying, like he is absolutely a, not breaking the pen to, to the for a second to stop writing. Um, you know, uh, what, where should I start? Uh, well, Mr. Shannon, uh, you are here in Arkham Asylum, uh, specifically uh, because uh, your uh, mental condition uh, has led you to the criminal lifestyle. And uh, this is what we uh, really want to dig into. So uh, let me ask you, Edward, I, um, I have your file here. I have some information from uh, uh, previous sessions and uh, your previous stay in the asylum. You, uh, you consider yourself a family man, is that right? Uh, you know, a flawed one, but I got family. I try to take care of them. Yeah, well, uh, tell me about them. Well, um, there's, there's, you know, there's a, I guess, where to start. I guess I could go backwards. There's, uh, my, my ex-wife, Isabel, um, and, uh, our daughter, Mila, um, Mila's nine uh and uh you know, this is your most recent uh x5 yes yeah yeah i got as i'm sure you know i got two others um and i got two um two kids with with uh each of them um so that's five kids total uh mila's adopted uh yeah so i uh, don't really talk to my kids from my first marriage um and uh you know, don't really talk to the wife either. Um, I'd like to keep talking to Isabel. That's the most recent one, but you know, she's not too big a fan of me being a criminal and also in Occam Asylum. So, um, yeah, I mean, and I, you know, I, my parents, uh, my, my mom's dead, um, had a pretty normal childhood up until I was going to be a, a journalist, but you know, when my mom got cancer, I, uh, well, somebody had to help support, you know, pay the medical bills. So into engineering I went and then, yeah. So that's when my girlfriend at the time, you know, got, got pregnant. And so we got married and 
and you know, I made a lot of mistakes. So, but you know, I'm I'm happy to have the family that I do. You know, even if some of them won't won't talk to me. Yeah, well, uh, that is very interesting to me. It, uh, you seem to care a lot for uh, your family, even the ones who you say uh, do not talk to you or you do not talk to. And uh, yet, uh, you are not in their lives. You are here. You are uh, behind these walls and not out there with them. Well, why do you think um, that is? Well, you know, I fucked up. I cheated on my, the, you know, my first, my first wife. I cheated on her. The kids obviously aren't too happy about that. And, you know, I, I had a lot of, wasn't, I wasn't good at communication. I was angry. I was hurt. Um, so I just, I never, you know, I tried to do right by them, you know, in terms of money, but, you know, they didn't want to see me. So I wanted to respect that. And also I was hurt, you know, I mean, it does make sense. Like, of course they didn't want to see me. I like broke up the, the whole family, but so I, and you know, I, I tried, I've tried to reach out to them in recent years, but it's a pretty resounding fuck you. So, you know, I don't really, I'm not going to push it. And, um, you know, um, I guess, you know, the, the second, the second marriage, uh, well, I, um, I had another affair, you know, I cheated again. So, uh, you know, we, we have a joint custody and we co-parent, um, that, you know, they're getting older, uh, jo Joanne and, and, uh, uh, Christine, um, those are my ex-wife Janice's kids in my second marriage. Um, but, you know, uh, you know, I also, you know, then I had child support and alimony payments, you know, to them too. So I, um, you know, I, I fell into crime and it, it paid, paid better, paid what I needed. You know, I, I could afford to put food on the table and put money into their college funds and, and, you know, and, and, and then I met Isabel and you know, I, I was going to therapy and I was going to family therapy with, you know, Joanne and Christine and Janice and, you know, but then Isabel found out that, you know, I was working for the, you know, found out about my life of crime and, you know, I'd lied to her and she couldn't, I mean, I understand, um, you know, her life's been touched by crime. So, you know, yeah. and now I'm in here. Who's in Gotham City has not been. Yeah. Well, but this is the it. contradiction that uh, I'm fascinated by with you, Edward. Uh, you, uh, your heart, it seems to be in the right place. You, you want to do right by the people around you. You, you want to provide for them. You want to take care of them. And yet, when you choose to act, you do so in ways which are destructive to that. You turn to crime to try to provide, and that uh, that backfires on you. You are not able to be uh, faithful to uh, the woman you love, and yet you do. It sounds like to me, love her uh, or them uh, in series. Well, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't cheat on his So uh, I thought I really was a changed man, but. But, you know, I guess I was still doing crime, so... Yeah, you have these I mean... old habits, this sort of cause that you keep returning to. What... what do you think that core is, Ed? Uh... Well, I guess I don't even really... I don't see it as a choice. Uh, I have to make money to pay for my family, the... Um, and... You know, I tried working for the GCPD, um, and I was struggling. The, I, they didn't pay me enough. <laughs> and there wasn't enough money for me, for my payments, for my rent. You know, like, where was I? Where, where else am I supposed to go? It's not like crime was my first choice. 
you know, it's not like I want to hurt people, you know, for a living, but you know, I, I even tried insurance, but that's just legal hurting people for a living. Like it's, I just, I guess I just don't see any other choice. It seems like there's no way out. And, you know, now I got friends, I've made friends who are like family to me here. And, you know, I want to make sure they're safe too. And it, I guess if you've never been in it, doc, you wouldn't get it because it, it doesn't feel like a choice. It feels like this is, this is your life. This is what you have to do. You know, what, a, what choice is it when the alternative is, uh, what you are describing. Well, if the, okay, let me, let me give you a choice. Um, you can steal a piece of bread or you can starve to death. What are you going to do, doc? Like what, what would you do? Well, I suppose in that case, a rational decision is to steal the piece of bread. Right. Is that a compulsion? It's a choice based on the need for survival. You know, like, I, I could either have gone and worked for the Riddler or I could have, uh, you know, built up even more crushing debt and eventually, I don't know, landed in prison, you know, or, <laughs> and then that debt gets transferred over to my families and then like their lives are ruined, ruined my kids' lives are ruined. So yeah, like maybe I'm not my kids' lives, maybe I'm a criminal, but it just, it doesn't, <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't seem like a compulsion to me. It just seems like what needs to be done. That is very and interesting. Uh, something you said uh, piqued my interest as well, Ed. Uh, you uh, are talking about your uh, your biological family, the families that uh, you have had with your uh, various wives. But you also said the people who you are with... Uh, other criminals who you have ended up with you refer to them as a family as well well you seem to uh, you seem to have something of a neck for constructing a family wherever you go I mean what do you think about that uh, it's not like I do it on purpose I just you know I just you know people are people and I you know, I see the, I, I've had my hard times, I've had my struggles, and I see the struggle in, you know, these people, and, you know, it hurts, it makes me sad for them, I want to help them, and, you know, I know they've got my back, and I've got their back, and in this And city, you have like, this, uh, this uh, impulse of the caretaker, yeah? Uh, I guess... I mean, you're a dad, I guess so. right? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Oh, no, I am not saying it is a, a positive thing or a negative thing. I'm merely making an observation. I, I, it feels good to make sure that the people around me are safe. And if I can help that happen, then it uh, makes me feel good about myself, like, maybe I'm not so much of a fuck-up after all. And uh, the idea of the people around you not being safe, does this, does this make you afraid, Ed? Is this something you fear? Yes. Greatly. Tell me about your fear, it's... Ed. I, I fear things happening to the people I care about and I, I can't stop it. Uh, I can't do anything. Um, I'm stuck on the other side of the door, just banging my fist against the glass, watching something happen and I'm powerless to stop it or, you know, nightmares about natural disasters, tsunamis, and I have to run around and like pick up all my kids, even though I, you know, like I don't, I don't even know. I mean, the oldest one's probably about to graduate college, out of college, and I don't, but I somehow, like, I have to go around the city and I gotta find them, we gotta get to higher ground, or there's some bomb threat, and I've gotta, 
I've got to disable it or I've got to throw myself on the bomb or, you know, I'm trying to patch up somebody who's bleeding and I don't know how to do it. That's... Ed, as you're talking, as you are laying out this fear of needing to take care of somebody you care about who uh, is in danger, who is trapped on the other side of the glass and you are there banging on it. We move to the present from this flashback where you are literally banging on this door in the visitor room, the visitation room. Uh, at the asylum uh, you have just watched your ex Isabel and uh, your uh, adopted daughter Mila leave the room head down this corridor uh, back through the, the sort of visitors entrance into this visitation room and the lights went out, and you heard an announcement on the PA system that one Jonathan Crane, a.k.a. Scarecrow, had taken over the facility. And there is now a hissing as some sort of gas fills the room, and you are banging on this door where they just exited. Ed. Yeah. We're back in the present. What do you do? Uh, oh god. Um, uh, don't I, um, well, okay, first I gonna cover my nose and mouth with, like, my jumpsuit. Um, and, uh, I, I, don't I have that phone? And would I be able to, like, get the door open to them? Uh, you I can have... certainly give it a shot. So you okay. previously set up a, a back door into the, uh, a wireless back door into yeah. Arkham's security systems for the main building and I believe one other building? Yes, the max, the higher security. Okay, great. So... You have you have this back door uh, into mm -hmm. those two buildings. Um, what I'll tell you is two items. One, there are two guards in this room who uh, are sort of casting about in this dim red emergency lighting that's flooding the space. Um, they are you know looking for a flashlight or something. And, uh, you know, as soon as they are able to, they know you're in here. They were watching you the, the whole time that you were having this visit with your daughter. Uh, as soon as they are able to kind of get a hold of themselves, they are going to come for you. Uh, because their protocol is if anything goes wrong, you lock everything down. Item two, if you... Uh, whip that phone out of your pocket and start to check your security back door, there is a block. There is an override that is coming now from the Asylum Central Security. Uh, sick. You would guess that somebody there has kicked the facility into high alert and taken over the systems. Who could it be? Well, who's to say? We'll never who's know. Who's to say? Look, but uh, what I... that means is that while you have this back door, which is going to give you advantage on hacking doors specifically going forward, uh, you are still going to have to roll for it. Okay, cool. Um, uh, damn. Okay, so I guess I'll just try to. I guess I'll just try to open the door and like, I don't know. It's not like Ed can like actually keep them safe, but if he can get them out and like somewhere where there's no 
like I feel like that's gonna just override like all other priorities you know like yeah, I don't care what right. they do to me for this like I gotta get like it's my nine-year-old child yeah and I'll tell you currently uh it has been long enough that they have gotten down the corridor and are out of sight so you don't know exactly where they are just that they left through the visitor's entrance okay but there's reasonably still in the facility uh it, it's just been like a minute so okay so yeah, yeah. i mean th um, they would have to be really booking it to have completely left the facility it's extremely unlikely they have left okay but this Alrighty. room is filling with gas you don't know what the situation is in other rooms okay um cool so okay, okay, you okay, are okay. you are going to try to hack the door in yeah. classic ed yeah. fashion so yeah. um pretty sure we're talking about a tinker roll uh start with your tinker rating you are going to be um this is contesting a level one you are level one okay, so you're at parity Okay, you so are in. You do not lose for that, but you are going to lose one because this is a desperate situation. Desperate situation. However, okay. you get one back because you have that security backdoor that you set up earlier. So those two cancel each okay. other out. Okay. Okay. And then. Okay. And then you can always push yourself. Thing. You can always take a devil's bargain. Or you can just roll it. Well, I have three, so. Okay, so, oh boy, please. Nope, wow. Mm -mm. Okay, so that's a three, a two, and a one, so. Oof. Oof okay. Is right. Yeah, um, Ed, you, uh, you start in, uh, on, you know, trying to, to bypass this new set of blocks that's up so you can get this door open. Um, and as you're going through on your phone, uh, one of the guards, uh, you a flashlight blazes to life through the, the dim redness of the emergency lighting right on you. Uh, uh, and it's like, all right, buddy, we're locking it down. Time to go back in the cell. Come on. Wait. Wow. Hey, where'd you get that? That's contraband. Uh, is this a, can, is this a consequence? Cause can I resist it? This is a consequence. You can resist it. Yes. Okay. Because I, I I gain what because I have the I'm in a special ability. I gain a die when resisting the consequences of hacking a system or tinkering with the machine. Yeah. Yeah. So if you do not resist, he is going to physically grab you and start dragging you out of the room. Okay. Okay. Cool. I would like to resist this consequence. Um. So what? attribute may I use to resist? Uh, how, what is your method here? How, how are you going to try to resist this? Are you going um, to try to, like, wriggle out of his grasp and flee from him? Are you going to react with violence? Are you going to try to talk your way out of this one? Okay, are you going okay, to try I... some other, uh, some other technical maneuver? Um, hmm, technical maneuver. Um, yeah, actually, could I use the phone's flashlight and try to blind him? <laughs> yeah, that's great. Okay, um, so I think in that case, uh, let's say you're thinking quickly on your feet, you're resisting with insight. So down your insight column, give that a roll. Okay, wipe three, and then I guess... Ah, <laughs> oh, yes. Um, a six, a five, and two ones. So that that's okay. The six, six. You resist without marking stress. You're doing great. Okay, so you flip up this this flashlight right into his eyes mm -hmm. as, as he's coming at you. Uh, he goes, Ah, the, what the fuck? Come on! And like tries to shield his eyes and he's stumbling back away from you. You have a moment to do something. Uh, but um, the first thing that I am going to make you do before you act okay. is you you gotta do it. 
you take in a breath and you feel this kind of tangy, acrid, metallic uh, uh, sort of a sort of a taste uh, in the in the air that you breathe in. Air. It's like cocaine. And it's fresh, hot cocaine. Delicious. You're Yum. fucked. Um, mm. No. You are going to give me a resistance roll with oh boy. prowess Fuck. to attempt to resist the effects of this fear gas. Okay. So, um... I am already at disadvantage for that. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. That's fine. Everything's fine. Yeah, it's a fine. Um, it's totally fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. See, this is a, a three and a two, so it's a two. Totally fine. We're good. Great. Doing great. Okay. So you can resist this. It's going to cost you four stress. Or you um, can choose not to. That's an option. If you don't want to burn the stress. Uh. The rule, I feel like I should resist. Okay. Or stress, mark it. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> okay. Uh, All are right. the guards, like, getting fucked up by this? Uh, do you want to find out now, or do you want to take an action? Do you want to set up your action first? Um, I want to set up an action. I think I gotta, I think, I think I gotta try to get, like, I imagine I can only pick one person to get out of the cell, like either Manny, Jackie, um, or uh, Ollie. Oh, or can if, I you, try to get... if you open the, the doors remotely? Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, would it be a global uh, thing or be one person? At this point, because of the lockdown, it's one by one. Yeah, if you wanted to do it globally, you would have to get to the central security office where they, they have the actual central computer. You have to physically be there for this. But remotely, you have that back door. You can attempt to open one cell. It is in a completely different part of the asylum than you're in, just so you know. Yeah, no, I I know, but, but I just feel like if... I feel like Ed is assuming this is asylum-wide, um, and so, like... He needs to start, I mean, the, like, getting yeah. people the, out. The Scarecrow's PA announcement did say that he had taken control of the entire facility. You know, maybe he was lying, but that's what he said, at least. I think... Okay, I think I'm gonna try to get... Oh, God. Oh, God. Um, uh, should I roll a die? I don't know who to get out. <laughs> um... I think I think I'm gonna try to get Manny out. Okay. Okay. Um. So what should I should I roll like uh, I guess Tinker? Okay. Yeah. Uh. This is gonna be the same roll as the previous door. Uh. In fact, it's it's all completely the same. You're down one for a desperate situation, but you're up one because you have the back door that you set up earlier. Um. But yeah, these guards are like, you know, they're they're temporarily blinded maybe that gives you enough time to do something quickly uh, but they're going to be coming at you again in a matter of seconds so this is absolutely a desperate situation uh, okay. you're rolling flat at this point with your tinker you can push yourself take a devil's bargain whatever you want what's a devil's bargain what is a devil's bargain here I always offer them but I usually don't have one prepared uh, just because it's part of the game and I like sounding coy. Uh, the devil's bargain here is... Uh, God, I got to give you a bad one. The devil's bargain here is you will, in doing this, you will lose enough time that you will legitimately lose track of uh, Isabel and Mila. Oh, so you okay. will have to actively, you will have to work actively to go find them again in the facility. Um. Okay. Uh. Yeah. I think I'm, I'll take that just because I think Ed's remembering okay. um the previous. I think it was the previous day or maybe the day before yesterday when he tried to um 
avoid getting hit by Sporkerine. Um, that that was that was their name, right? Sporkerine. Yeah, who Sporkerine are are amazing, yeah. beloved uh, spork um, character based uh, mutant who we all love. Who is probably not a mutant, but <laughs> fucking goes to town with those sporks. Let me tell you. Yeah, who absolutely beat the shit out of Ed. So Ed's like, I need some backup. So we're gonna start with Danny. Okay. okay. Um. So you have an extra die for the Devil's Bargain. Roll them up. Okay. So I, I got a, I got a six and a five and a four and a three. Great. A All right. Six will do it, and we will, uh, we will cut to the results of that momentarily. I need one more roll from you, Ed. Oh, boy. This is going to be a fortune roll. We're going to use the guard's level, which is one. Oh, okie dokie. Um, okay, fortune roll. So what's the, st what's the stat, I guess? Like, the or it the is, It is a one die fortune roll. Oh, okay. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Gotcha. Okay. I have my little cheat sheet right here because I never know how many dice to use. Alright. Cool, cool. Um, that was a big fat one. <laughs> okay. That's gonna be very bad for these guards. So <laughs> you uh you quickly uh run this hack. You see that uh Manny's cell door is unlocked now. Um and the two guards are are rushing you. Uh, and then one of them with the flashlight up stops and says, Oh no. Oh my god. Oh no. It's the Joker. He's loose. He's here. No. 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 I'm, Joker, I'm just a god here. I don't, I don't know anything, man. Leave me alone. I got a family. And the guard is like drops his flashlight and is backing away from you scrambling back in panic uh and you can see the other guy look over hear this and between hearing it and the suggestion of the gas it is real to him as well and he is also scrambling back away from you uh and these two guards uh are extremely extremely scared of you as one reaches towards the taser at his Hey, hip. you want to hear Cut. a joke? To Manny. Manny. You are in your cell in the medium security wing. Mm-hmm. It is, I believe we established, late afternoon. Mm -hmm. The lights go out. They mm. come back on with the red emergency lighting. You hear an announcement over the PA system. This is Dr. Jonathan Crane. I've taken control of this facility. He continues. Yeah. as before um you are in your cell for a moment what do you do here uh manny would get up How immediately to, to this manny would get up and go look outside yep and just trying to get an eye on what's going on with the guards or who's in the hallway because this is not what they discussed in their plan. This is it is, this is something else. Not. So, are you looking outside to the grounds outside through your little barred window, or are you looking out the security door that is? Uh, oh, sorry, yeah, I meant the window and the door. Great, yeah. great. The window okay. and the door. Yeah. So you look out uh, and you see the red security, the, the red emergency lights, rather, uh, lighting up the. Um, the dormitory block corridor here. Um, and you hear some shouts, uh, some, you know, uh, curses, uh, a little bit of uh, alarm uh, as some guards start rushing back and forth uh, the, um, 
the few guards who were patrolling the corridor here uh, seem to be uh, rushing towards the um, the security door that bars this particular hallway. I think Manny's just gonna look around, see if she can, if there's anything else she can see. And as to why they're, are they just all running out to subdue Jonathan Crane? Or is it something else? And I guess at that mm. point, what does yeah. Manny know about Jonathan Crane? Like, I mean, as in like, is he famous? Have we all heard of him? Do we all have an idea of what he does? Uh, that's a good question. I think, I think Scarecrow is perhaps a little less well-known than some of the, like, big uh, marquee names who always make the papers. Um, you know, everybody in Gotham City knows who the Joker is. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, Scarecrow, I think, is slightly more obscure, a little more of a shadowy figure. Uh, give, me a, uh, give me a fortune roll with your study stat to which, which see what, believe is... what you might know. My study stat is a zero. Well, well, uh, Rob, with the lower one was a one, so I got a one. Okay. You have never heard of Dr. Jonathan Crane. You don't know who this is. You know nothing about him. Uh, cool. Yeah. So, uh, from your point of view, uh, Someone uh, new has announced themselves and taken control of the facility. And that's what you know. And as you kind of rack your brain, thinking, do you remember anything about this person? Doesn't ring a bell. Uh, you hear a an electronic whir and a click hmm. from your cell door. What do you do? Oh. This this has to have been Ed. Um, Manny's gonna look both ways out the little window. And if mm -hmm. there's nobody coming, she is going to leave into the hallway. Alright, are you trying to are you just walking out? Are you trying to be stealthy about this? Um uh, it's, it's, what's it's your definitely like a peek, come out, kind of like cling to the shadows. Uh, she is going to try to maintain stealth just in case someone does come running down the hallway or another uh, inmate spots her out in the hallway and, you know, tries to turn her in or something. But she would immediately go to head towards whoever sells closer, um, Ollie or Jackie. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So let's get a roll. Uh, yeah. you are certainly prowling, so let's roll with your your prowl rating. You're against mm -hmm. the guards, who, uh, as established in this, uh, in the main building, are level one, uh, as standard. Mm -hmm. So you're at level parity, and, uh, you can always, if you would like to, for whatever reason, push yourself, take a devil's bargain, what have you, to get more dice, or you just roll them as is. Uh, I have three, so I'm just gonna roll them. All right, let's see how it goes. Which is good because it was a six, four, and a three. Okay, six will do it. You move like a shadow down the blood red illuminated corridor here. Um, That's my girl. You. If there's yeah, a camera, I think... Manny will blow uh -huh. a kiss to it because she figures it's Ed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is it Ed? Well. Mm, well, she doesn't but, know Jonathan Crane either. If he's doing her favors, he can get kissed too. It's fine. But yes, you you do blow a kiss to the uh, the security camera. Um, it does not react. I'm sorry. <laughs> and I think you are able to actually like. Um, there's uh, a couple of guards who run by down this corridor, uh, and you actually like press yourself against the uh against the wall as they rush they rush past and they do not notice you in the dim lighting here so 
here's my question. Um, what do y'all know about where the others are located? The medium security wing of Arkham Asylum is the west, uh, I'm sorry, the east wing, I decided, mm -hmm. of the main building. Um, it is a series of, um, uh, it is a series of corridors. Uh, there are a, a number of different floors, um, each of which has a, a corridor lined with cells. And, uh, there is a security door at the end of each hallway. And then that leads to an elevator. You know this because you are, you know, when you're let out. Uh, you're regularly taken through the security doors from your cell, through the corridor, um, to an elevator that goes up and down to a, uh, a patient transfer area uh, and sort of a small security station. That's kind of the like central choke point for the medium security wing. Mm -hmm. And from there, that in turn connects to... Um, in the rear of the building, some of the um, sort of patient recreation facilities, that sort of thing. The cafeteria, uh, gymnasiums, auditorium goes out to the external like exercise yards in the back. Um, the other way uh, goes um, more towards like treatment rooms, interview rooms, like the one that we saw in the flashback with Ed. Um, mm. Uh, which are on the upper floors, uh, and then the very front of the building uh, are the visitation rooms. So, uh, and those lead into the sort of like public facing areas of the asylum at the front of the main building. Mm -hmm. So that is what you know about the layout. Uh, and I think all of you have a, a pretty good idea of, of what this layout is, having just been moved back and forth around the asylum. But, uh... I am going to, I'm going to ask for a fortune roll, and that is going to determine how easy it is going to be to get to your compatriots. Okay, because I had this whole idea of why we would know <laughs> otherwise. And my idea was that, well, what have we talked about for six months besides like the guards in our wing? And it's like, oh, which one are you in? It's like, you know, when you go up the stairs, you take the first, no, no, not the first left, but the next, you know, the one after that. Yeah, that's my hallway. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, I I feel like that's reasonable. So let's say um, because I think this is going to be insight. Uh, okay. Yeah, I, I think it's actually going to be. Mm, is it insight broadly, or is it study? I think it's study specifically. Yeah. Oh. So let's have a fortune roll with study. Uh, so does that mean I do two and? Take the lower one, even if it's uh, a fortune if roll. You, if you are at zero, yes. You, if you're okay. rolling a disadvantage, to take. The I lower. I couldn't, I couldn't like retroactively have helped Manny right by like going over the layout with her. Uh, I I would allow it if you want to pay stress for a flashback, but yes. as we're on a fortune I roll, would... that would necess that would need to apply to an action. That, uh, oh, that she'll oh, be doing God, right. going forward. Right. So Fortune. yeah, I'll right. I'll totally okay. allow it for uh, to pay stress, but you're gonna right. have to Sorry. apply I... it to something other than the fortune roll. Right. Okay, well right. then I'm okay. gonna roll that fortune roll. All right. Woo. Five and a one. Okay, uh, with a one, everybody is in a com is on a completely studying. different floor. Yeah. No. Beat. So let us say, uh, I I don't think I'm gonna make you search for them because that doesn't really make sense. Like you said, you would talk, you know. Mm -hmm. It it would make sense that you would have no clue. Uh, let's say, Manny, you are on the fourth floor. Uh, Jackie is on the fifth, and Ollie is on the second floor. Okay. And 
just because I got a little bit confused when you were describing the where our how our rooms were located are they separate corridors that are completely enclosed or is it like you know tv prison where there's like the stairs that are mm. open and like yeah. all of the rooms enter out into like these hallways you know what i mean like so basically does manny have to go up and around different corridors or can she like if she finds a way to jump up the floor is the walkway for the f next floor above her I yeah gotta have so dumb waiters right <laughs> So this is a scenario where we are talking about completely separate enclosed okay. corridors. We're talking about this sort of like old Victorian building where they, they've built it out like these, these sort of wings extending. So you have a series of like stacked corridors essentially connected by an elevator shaft that have this central choke point uh, at, the, at the security station. If you yeah. would like oh to, I, I will say, uh, uh, interesting ways to get around that are not going through the corridor. Uh, you could get to the exterior of the building. That's an option. You could attempt to climb up and down the side. You could certainly attempt to get to the roof. You could go uh, up and down. You could climb the elevator shaft instead of taking the elevator up and down. Um, and, um, well... Interesting that, that this should come up. Manny, as you are pressed against the wall here and these guards rushing past, you hear uh, a little uh, a little hiss, a bit of a, a hiss of air through a vent that is Oh, good, because Manny was immediately feet. thinking HVAC. What if I went through the H? No. It's <laughs> an option. Uh, Manny is going to do the elevator because going outside and coming back in the building by scaling from the outside sounds like it'll take too long. So I think the elevator is probably the most direct and fastest path up a floor. Okay, cool. So um, so I think what you see then is this, Manny. Uh, those guards rush past. You start hearing this hiss of gas through okay. the vents into the hallway here. Uh, doesn't sound great. That's not a normal sound. And the guards have gone through the big security door that mm -hmm. blocks the whole hallway um, and into the sort of small vestibule uh, where they would be waiting for the elevator. I'll say there's a, there's a glass, there's a a pane of glass in these sort of double security doors uh, that are at the end of this hallway um, and you can, I think, see uh, the emergency lights in the elevator shaft I think rotate, they flash and you can see mm. this flashing red light. Uh, a couple of guards kind of nervously uh, standing around waiting for the elevator. I don't know, do I have time to go again or with an action. What, yeah, what, what do you do? Uh, Manny would look into her pockets where, I don't know, there's like a piece of, like a snack from lunch or something, like an apple, you know, I feel like Manny would have pocketed random fruit for later. She sure. wants to throw it down the hallway and distract everybody, you know, very, very movie style where like all three, ideally all three of them will go running after one sound they heard. Okay. And clear the path of the elevator for her. Cool, so you wanna throw it in the opposite direction of basically, if you're standing in the middle of the hallway, the door, the security door to the elevator is at one end and there is uh, a, uh, there, there is the end of the corridor at the other end. You want to throw it down the end of the corridor such that you mm -hmm. make enough noise that they will come back through the security door, go past you, and go down to investigate, right? Yeah, I mean, Manny can't fight three people, not alone. So you can she's try just to do anything. To... <laughs> she's just gonna for sure. try. Okay, so uh, a note about inventory because we didn't go over this. Yeah. So you would uh, you would normally have your gear that you mark off, 
As y'all have been uh, uh, gently incarcerated in this asylum, uh, you do not have access to any of your normal gear, um, and you cannot just mark off gear like you normally be would be able to uh, in mm-hmm. the game. Um, if you want to have something specific, you can write it in and mark mm-hmm. off the gear slot. You still the max you can carry is as always is five. Uh, but if you have noted that you've grabbed anything from anybody, picked anything up, mark it off. Um, if you do mm-hmm. something with it, like, you know, immediately discard it, um, yeah. I will let you unmark that slot. And certain things, if it's, like, elaborate or retroactive, you might have to pay some stress for a flashback to have obtained it uh, mm-hmm. in, in some way. Just so everybody's clear on what's happening with gear. Mm-hmm. So, you take this uh, shiny, uh, extremely waxy, golden, uh, red delicious apple. I mean, it's a red delicious, yeah. isn't it? God damn it. Uh, a, a Nobody else terrible, wants them. A terrible garbage apple uh, that they would only <laughs> give to you uh, if you had been incarcerated. <laughs> and you chuck it down the hall. Give me a roll. Uh, you are against the guards, which is uh, level one. You're level one. You're at parity. Uh, you push yourself. And what I am I rolling? You are rolling with. Uh, uh, I think this is either maneuver or prowl. I, I uh, think either makes I sense because par- you're either prowl? being sneaky and deceptive, or you are, you know, uh, maneuvering something around. I, I would accept either of those. Um. I would, uh, I think, I think prowl, I I will do prowl and I would like to push myself, please. Okay, great. So take two stress, push yourself, roll them up. Okay. Alrighty. Okay, that's uh, roll two dice instead of six instead of one, and that's right, roll two more and two fours. Okay, so a six. Six. Okay, great. Uh, Six will do it for sure. So you chuck this terrible apple. Uh, all the way down the hallway and it bangs very loudly against uh, one of the cell doors and you see the three guards uh, turn look through the look through the window one of them in you know classic video game style says what was that and uh, then they um they, I think, uh, I don't think they have acquired flashlights uh, at this point. Um, so they kind of they they take out their um, their batons uh, mm-hmm. and inch open the security door um, and just start slowly and cautiously. With the six, it, it's a full success, so it's all three of them inching their way down the dim corridor into the the blood red darkness here. Mm -hmm. Uh, They do not leave the door open. Uh, They do do slide it shut and you hear it click click locked behind them. But uh, your prowl roll from before holds and they inch past you. Their eyes are fixed on the end of the corridor. You have a little bit of time until they get there, uh, discover that there's nothing there, and turn back. What do you do? I would like to uh, continue to stealth my way towards the elevator shaft and the door that's in the way. Okay, yeah. You are able to sneak over to the main security door for the hallway. No problem. What do you do? God. I can't think of any reason why Manny would have like a lock pick. She's in prison. Um, uh, like I said, with gear, if you would like to pay one stress, uh, you can flash back and tell me how you acquired something that you can use as a lock pick. Uh, Somebody in chat said uh, a sharpened toothbrush. <laughs> yeah, sharpened toothbrush. Um, well, um. 
Maybe not a lock a pick. We gotta do this close. Since we're doing classic movie, uh, can I? Can Manny have one of these like black hairpins? A hundred percent. That maybe, maybe uh, she acquired by flirting with a guard. Great. Yeah. You know what I, it is like? Push, push the hair behind the ear situation and like pull the. Yeah, the I, think it's, I think it's very specifically one of the guards who just snuck by in the other direction. Uh, uh. So, you know, maybe you can you can look over to them and uh, silently thank them for their contribution. Yeah. Right. Okay. So mark one stress. Uh, yep. Mark down that you have one. Count them one. Bobby pin. <laughs> uh, Manny would like to use the bobby pin to pick this lock. Great. We're in uh, Arkham. I'm assuming it's not all fancy schmancy. Like, I feel like it's it, if it's a digital lock has a key. Yeah, I mean, you you gotta have redundant systems. There in in the real world, there's like very very few digital uh, or electronic locking systems that don't have just a regular ass manual backup so like, that's completely yeah. reasonable okay um yeah if it if it doesn't have a regular manual backup that you can pick um mm -hmm. it is it is going to be something a little more intense than the uh standard medium security at arkham asylum yeah so you are tinkering with this lock uh give me a roll with your tinker rating. Uh, um, 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 can I hear it? Wait, hold on. Uh, no, that doesn't help me. Um, can I hear a devil's bargain on this one? Uh, devil's bargain. Um, I mean, it has to be that, uh, the guards are going to turn around and spot you. Yeah, they're all, all the right. way at the other end of the corridor, but... We're, that's what I'm thinking. She's going to make a run for it. All right. Let's try it Let's out. Let's do it. Um, okay. So this is a single die for me. Four. Okay. Mixed success. Um, uh, cool. So I think, I think with a mixed success, uh, they are, uh, you, uh, you know, you, you're fiddling with the lock, you click it open, uh, and as you start sliding open the security door, there's this just tremendous scrape and screech oh. of metal on rails. The three guards. Cool, cool, cool. cool. At the other end, uh, turn, look directly at you down the corridor. One of them shouts, hey, how'd you get out of your cell? Uh, and they are bolting at you full speed. And reminder, they have those batons out. What do you yeah, do? Yeah, uh, Manny's going to push the door closed behind her locket and then make a run I, th I think at this point she thinks she needs to hide because they'll just follow her up to where she's going and catch her otherwise okay so she's going to try to make it so, lo look like she's running one way and then like hide in the elevator shaft or something okay so you are in a just super small room uh this basically little vestibule the only things here are elevator door and security door that you have just run through and you said shut yes she was okay. gonna try to slow them down by shutting that shutting it i didn't realize there was only the ele elevator door in this yeah. vestibule yeah um i mean I, would they have emergency stairs you, uh make a fortune roll let's see if there's emergency stairs uh this is going to be I, I don't think this is stat based. Uh this just is just a one die. A straight up one yeah, one D six. Four. Four. Uh okay. Mixed success. 
Uh, okay, so there is uh, there is the security door you came through. There is the uh, there is the elevator, um, and I think there are stairs, but they are at a door on the other end of the corridor. Okay. So you were, um, you threw the apple towards the emergency stairs. Uh, yeah. yeah. So okay. You have, so Manny's gonna. You have the elevator doors. You have the security door. You just came through. You have a vent in the ceiling. Which, if you look up, there's uh, just this this through the there's something sort of filtering down. Yeah. Don't have time to worry about that right now. Uh, Manny's going to try to get into the elevator shaft. Okay. Great. Uh. <laughs> So, the guards called the elevator, uh, which I, I think uh, dings, uh, and the doors shrimp open, uh, and you have this uh, essentially, like, the, the equivalent of a, a cargo or utility elevator in here. Uh, you can rush into, the, the way to get to the elevator shaft is you're going to rush in, and you have to get the ceiling panels off. Yep. That's what she's going to try to do. Cool. All right. Uh, I think this is... I'm going to say this is a maneuver um, because you were okay. just trying to get this done super quickly. You're moving through space. Uh, this is now mm -hmm. a desperate action. Uh, so your maneuver rating, minus one. Mm-hmm. Um, Always push yourself. Okay. Take a devil's bargain to get more dice. I would Those like to options. use my move... I would like to use my move fancy footwork which says that when I push myself, I can either perform a superhuman feat of acrobatics or misdirect my enemies so they attack each other. Cool. I would like to... I don't, I don't want to mess with this. I'm going to try... I'm going to perform a superhuman feat of acrobatics and get, get up into the tunnel. Okay, great. You know, so, as you do. Yeah. So... Boing, boing. Uh, with that ability, you can definitely do that. The question is uh, whether the guards get there first. Yeah. And that's what you're rolling for. Okay. Three. A three. You guys are not my friend today. Uh, all right. Manny, you... Uh, you rush into the elevator, you uh, leap up, uh, and essentially, like, in one move, you sort of dive through the ceiling. It's, uh... uh like, the, reverse the gravity, yeah. like... <laughs> right, the, the paneling, you just shunt it aside, and you're leaping up, and that's when you feel somebody grab your ankle and pull you back down into the elevator, uh, and you collapse, slam onto the floor, and all three guards are standing over you, batons drawn, and you are starting to feel, as you breathe, this taste uh, in your mouth, uh, this acrid like hot taste. Cocaine. The taste of hot cocaine. Give me what a roll hell? to resist the effects of fear gas, Manny. Okay. You're going to be rolling with your prowess. Okay. Six, five, three. All right. So six, you can resist this clear and free. Uh, but uh, one of the guards uh, does uh, bring that baton up and is about to slam it down on you, which is, I think, a good place to cut. Jackie, we join you uh, some minutes in the past uh, at this point. We're, we're just going to rewind a little bit. You are in your cell, which I believe we have established is on the fifth floor of the medium security wing uh, in the Arkham main building. Uh, 
small padded room with bed, a toilet, a desk bolted to the wall, little grungy barred window looking out over the asylum grounds, and a big honking a uh, heavy metal door barring your exit to the world at large. Uh, but that has a nice window that you can look out of, too. Like everyone else, you uh, experienced the power outage, the emergency lights came back on, you heard over the PA system that Jonathan Crane, a.k.a. Scarecrow, had taken control of Arkham Asylum. And you are now in your cell as guards uh, rush back and forth down the corridor. What do you do? Well, I think I have to start with the same question that Pooja started with, which was, does Jackie know who Jonathan Crane is? Yes, also a great question, and I will have you make the same role to figure that out. So give me a Which role one was that? With your study rating. Perfect. I'm so proficient role. in study, guys. You would I, I have absolutely zero uh pips and insights. <laughs> Jackie Manny Shimmer. Okay. Just so, absolutely nothing in there. It's gonna be good. <laughs> it's okay. But you know, sometimes disadvantage works out. Sure, sometimes it does. Um what about a this six time? and a three. Three. Yeah, that's gonna be a failure. Jackie, you too have not ever heard of anybody by the name of Dr. Jonathan Crane. Doesn't ring a bell. Okay, so she's not panicking yet. Um, I think, you know, right before the lights were going out, she was probably sharpening the shiv she had managed to steal away from one of uh, Joker's goons that geniusly yes. tried to shank her uh, over lunch uh, did not go well for them um so she's just yeah, sharpening they are that all up. certainly certainly in the uh medical building at this point oh, yeah. uh so I, I think she's in the process of doing that when the lights go out and i think even with limited knowledge that's not good so she immediately stows the shiv into like the waistband uh, of her pants again, pulling her shirt down over it, and goes up to uh, the barred window that l overlooks uh, the hallway beyond her cell and is just trying to peer yep. out to see what the hell is going on. Yeah. Uh, so you see uh, a couple of guards uh, sort of scrambling back and forth, shouting to each other, you know, get somebody get a dang flashlight. Why don't we have flashlights? We should have flashlights. Uh, <laughs> And they they seem to be in a bit of a state of alarm. Um, and I think we'll start this a little early. Jackie, you can hear a hiss. No, that's fine. You don't have to start it early. Uh, yes. I mean, it, it occurs, uh, you know, it, it had occurred for everybody very shortly after the announcement over the PA system. Um, but I will just say that you are noting it at this point. Um, does it? Jackie has that, that strange sensation that something horrible is about to happen, and I think her her fight or flight is kicking in. She's trapped in a very small box, and there's a, the lights have gone out. There's suspicious noises. The guards seem freaked out. So she's going to, like, pound on the door. Hey! What's going on? Uh, let's have a roll here. Oh boy. You are, I think, trying to sway one of the guards to stop and talk to you. Uh, yeah, I have one. Or, and uh, whatever you say, this will, you know, if you try to have some effect in the conversation, this will carry forward for that. So uh, let's have an action roll with sway. Um, I don't think you're in a desperate situation yet, and you are at level parity with the guards, so you're just rolling with your sway. Push yourself right, to devil's my, bargain I'll, if you want more dice. But I think I'll that, take my chances up. with just the one right now. All right. Oh, two. <laughs> That's typical. Uh, uh, the okay. dice hate uh, us today. 
a uh, definitely a a failure. Um, so uh, I think uh, one of the guards uh, stops uh, and like gives a good bang on your door uh, and says, "Hey, calm it down in there. We're in an emergency situation. I need you to cool it. If you keep banging on this door, I'm gonna come in there and I'm gonna beat your ass down." And walks Fuck away. Fuck you too. Shit. Um. Can she? Is there? Where's the vent in her cell? Uh, you can have. Can she see it? Uh, yeah. Let's say there is a uh, there is a narrow grate uh, that is. I want to say it's up rather than down because I think there might be a drain Shit. down. Um, so there's a narrow grate set into the corner of the ceiling. I don't think there's a way for her to like block it, given that there's nothing to hang anything from in this room. Uh, I, you have sheets. I have sheets and I have a pillow. Yeah, on on the bed. You could certainly do that. I can try. I'll I'll give it a shot, but I I I think that. Uh, um, I think she is, uh, yeah, she's, that's where she's hearing the noise. So she's going to do her best. She's, she's okay. not an engineer or anything like that. She's just. Okay. Cool. So you are, you are specifically trying to block up this vent yeah. and prevent, uh, whatever, uh, appears to be making its way through the HVAC system from getting into your cell. Um, I I don't think this requires a roll. Like, there's no way you could not do this. So, uh, you, you know, uh, you, you grab the pillow off the bed, uh, you, you know, jam it against the grate, you jam some sheets, uh, up against, uh, up against there. Oh, no, I'm sorry, it's up. We said it was up, right? Yeah, that's down. why it's up, yeah. Right. Uh, okay, so you need some way to secure it. To that's the, what I was asking about. Yeah, to the ceiling. I'm sorry. Because yeah. I wasn't sure if it was possible to do that, but she would certainly try, even if it just meant her tossing the sheets up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, you can, you know, uh, yeah, you can try to sort of like wedge it between yeah. the little things of the grates and maybe it'll sort of like, you know, get itself like caught in there. So you can do that. You can yeah, she'll give it a shot. That. She'll give it okay. a shot. Cool. So yeah, uh, again, I, I don't think that's going to require a roll. You're able to do that, uh, and you uh, you certainly don't hear the hissing as loud. Surely that will make a difference. <laughs> um, and then I think she she really doesn't want to keep staying in the cell. She has no way to contact anybody, so she's going to look for some weak points on the door. The guards are freaking out. That's not a good sign. Yeah, yeah, all right. Um... Are you, what's your plan once you identify the weak points? Are you just going to try, are you going to try to like pry it? Are you going to smash I'm gonna it? I'm going to break the door down however I can do that. Okay, great. Um, the lights are off. The guards are freaking out. I can still hear them. There's a hissing noise coming from the vents. I'd like to not be in this room anymore. <laughs> great. Okay, so if your goal is to just physically break the door, um... I think we are looking at a, uh, <laughs> I mean, I think we're actually looking at, um, the closest thing is probably a skirmish. Yeah. Let me skirmish the door. I'm right? good at that. Like yeah, that's three violence. That's I'm glad I, I do the violence really well, David. Yeah. That's all I can do. Yeah. So, um, uh, give me an I'm going to try to commit uh, violence against rating. the door. Okay, I've got three in that. I'm assuming I'm at level parity with the door. <laughs> uh, yes. You, okay, you, good. The door does not out-level you. You've got one six already. Okay. Okay, so we got a six, four, and a three. Okay, uh, yeah. With a six, you do it. How? <laughs> what are the weak points that you identify on the door? And how okay. do you bust them open? Um... 
I'm gonna say, I don't think this specific door has hinges per se. It's a, it, we know it's a, like, it's a, it's a, it's a computer program lock. Uh, based on what our what our original plan was for like Ed to release all of the locks. Yeah, yeah, we we it definitely has an electronic lock on it. So wherever the furthest point from that lock is, she will be focusing on because the lock tends to be the stronger part of the door. Cool. Um, cool. And you know she's busted many a door in her in her time. Uh, this one might be a little bit more heavy, heavier than most of them, but uh, the principle should still be the same. She's quite literally gonna use like like forward momentum in this she's gonna yeah, start I feel like you're just, into you're it just again and again and up. again you're throwing yourself against the door back up throw yourself against the door yeah sure uh and you are hitting the uh you are hitting the edge opposite the lock um and you are just slamming into it over and over again uh until finally uh the door with a uh, truly gnarly screech of metal uh, pops away from where it's set uh, in the uh, in the cell wall, uh, and there is just sort of enough of a gap that you can kind of like squeeze through uh, out into the hallway. Um, of course, this was uh, not a quiet affair. No. Uh, and you had to go at it for a bit. So uh, I think in that time, uh, you know, the uh, the guards up here, um, I think uh, because the one was alerted to you earlier specifically, uh, as you slide, as you make that huge racket and slide out into the hallway, you hear from the security doors leading to the elevator. Hey, what the hell? And uh, there is a guard running at you with a stun baton. Come at me, bro. Bring it on. Um, bring I, it on. I think. I think Jackie just sort of rolls her her shoulders back. You're definitely a little bit bruised at this point. She still has the nasty cut from when one of Joker's goons tried to garrot her earlier. Yeah. <laughs> um, and she just looks super done. Like the lights are still out, I'm assuming. And, yeah. you know, she just, again, that fight or flight instinct. And she's been wanting to wail on these guards for, what was it now, six months to a year? There's a lot of pent up rage. Yeah. Uh, and she's going to take it out on this poor chump right now. <laughs> All right. So this guy is running at you, uh, stun baton in hand. Uh, you can see the electricity crackling at the end of it. And he's going to uh, attempt to just stab it into you as he's running in your direction. What do you do? I'm going to use his momentum against him. And I'm just sort of, I'm going to grab him. Um, as he's coming at me, and the goal is to like flip him up and back into the 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 dented door, essentially. Yeah. Cool. And cool. hopefully take that sun baton away from him. Yeah. Would love me one of those. Skirmish roll. Uh, you are at level with the guard. Roll him up. Pay stress if you want. All right. Um. Yeah, I will actually. Um, I have not finished rolling. I don't know if you want me to stress. If, yeah, if you, stress, if you right? want to pay, if you want to pay the stress, just pay it. Roll the extra die. Two stress. Two stress, right? Two yep. stress. Um, cool. All right. Five and a two to start out with, and a four and a two. So five is the highest. Uh, okay, mixed success. Uh, so uh, let's uh, let's trade some harm here. Um, I'm going to uh, start a clock for the guards here. Um, we will fill in one for what you just got. And uh, the the guy does jam the stun baton into you. Uh, and, you know, you you grimace uh, as you feel uh, as, as you feel the electricity connect but you are able to grab this dude 
Uh, and again, like you say, you just lever him over your shoulder. Stun baton, you know, disconnects very quickly uh, and you slam him into the door. Uh, he is out. You are going to take, uh, I think from this stun baton, one box of level one harm. Okay. Um, and I'm taking that. Um, I'm taking the stun baton. Okay. And I'm adding that you, to my gear yep, right now. You uh, reach down, you grab the stun baton, and there are two more guards uh, rushing at you from the direction of the elevator and the security doors. Okay. Uh, I'm, I've got stun baton in one hand. I'm going to whip out the shiv in the other. And uh, we've got one blunt object and one sharp object. We're just going to see... Which one hits people first in this? Yes, you have all your options on the table. Plan. What could go wrong? Yeah, uh, I'm going right. to charge down the hallway. Um, sneaking is not Jackie's strong suit. Um, no. And uh, I'm just going to throw myself at these guys. All right. Great. There's only uh, two of them. I like those odds. Yeah. Let's roll another, another skirmish. Yeah, Same I'll push odds. myself again. Surely this, okay. surely pushing myself now will not be a problem for later. Okay. Why? Stress Why? is a hey, limited resource. Smash. I know. And I never said Jackie was smart. Uh, off she goes. So that's gonna be four days. I'm not bad. That's why we push ourselves because that's two sixes. Two and sixes. Two fours, baby. Oh goodness. Okay, two sixes is a critical success, meaning you are able to completely fill this clock uh, and you take out both of these two other guards uh, with, uh, you know, very efficiently. What does this look like? Um, honestly, Jackie was expecting a little bit more. Um, I think she's disappointed. Uh, she's- Yeah, they, they're has clearly a, again, off that, that, their that game. Pen, yeah, that, that pent up rage has been sitting in her and she released it just a little bit, but she was expecting more from them. Uh, and I think she's disappointed at the way that they, they just charged at her. You know, they seem to know like one move, which is to just stun the attacker or inmate and that they just keep doing it. So it becomes very obvious to, you know, just use it against them, which yeah. is what she does. Cool. So uh, you uh, you have one coming at you from one side. You sort of plant yourself in the center of the hallway uh, at, like a bullfighter, and a a thrust with the stun baton in one direction and a slice with the shiv in the other, uh, and they just go crumpling uh, around the side, slamming into cell doors uh, on the on the side of the hallway here yeah uh and jackie wipes the blood off of the shiv and she's like fucking pathetic and i'm gonna gather up the rest of the stun batons because at some point i would love to give those to people yeah totally uh so mark those in on your gear because you are gonna have to carry them uh how many is that later. stun baton times three now uh yeah yeah because each of them was armed with one uh, awesome. and I, I, I think you, you hear, you hear like a little, uh, uh, a little tapping at the, uh, at the door of one of the cells that one of the guards slammed into and you, uh, you just hear a muffled like, Hey, get, get, can you take me with you? <laughs> uh, I peer into the cell. W what have I got here? Just random dude. Uh, yeah, a, uh, uh, a, a sort of, uh, uh, nondescript, uh, nondescript guy and a, uh, an Arkham striped scrubs, uh, glasses, uh, looks, uh, not worth your time. I'll, uh, I'll open the door for him if I can do that from the outside, but I'm mostly just going to be like, you're not coming with me, buddy. But uh, hey, let's see how fast you can run. 
Uh, I mean, if you grab like a uh, you know a key card from one of the the guards, yeah, I'll do that for sure. You can certainly open this cell. Cool. No reason to leave the poor sucker in here, but uh, no, <laughs> you're not coming with me. Yeah. Uh, okay. So you, yeah, uh, you tap the key card, shunk, shunk, uh, and the uh, the guy uh, sort of just like meekly uh, sort of uh, makes his way into the hall. Okay. Thanks. Uh, what, what, what's the plan? What's the what's the plan? No, 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 no. You're not part of my plan. Get going. No, 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 no. I, I got, I got to You gotta help me. You gotta help me. Yeah. Okay. No, fuck off. And run. Uh, he, run. He tries to like grab your your lapels here. Uh, he is. He is like. You look into his eyes, and he looks intense. Oh shit, buddy. Look, I'm giving you as much of a chance as you're ever gonna get. Go for it. But if you don't let go of me, I'm gonna let you out. No, no, no. You gotta help me, okay? You, you gotta take me with you. You gotta help me. I need help. I need help here, I'm okay? gonna knock him out. I'm, I'm gonna knock him out. All right. Uh, give me a roll. Yeah, nope. Just, uh, my patience is very thin. <laughs> it's already a six and a five and a four. Okay. Uh, yeah, with a six, uh, you, you are able to knock him out. Like, no. That's what you get for trying to be a little nicer in here. Yeah, so you you push him back uh, away from you, you know, sort of, uh, uh, and I, I think he, he has his hands into you, into your shirt, like clawed a little bit, uh, and he, like, rips the hem of your scrubs as you, uh, as you sort of shove him away, uh, and then with a, uh, with a second move, uh, just sort of like slam him onto the onto the ground. Uh, That's cool. I now have a stylish V-neck, so I'm okay yeah. with that. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it was a uh, I think uh, slightly disconcerting experience. Uh, this guy went from zero to uh, zero to ninety in no time flat. It was somewhat alarming. <laughs> Jack is a little disturbed by that, but then again, this is Arkham. And right. maybe this guy had a problem. He was in at least the medium security way. Yeah. Um, I, I think uh, Jackie's a little weirded out, is just kind of going to shrug it off and uh, keep the key card and uh, try to make her way. She doesn't... So we discussed this earlier. We know what on which floor everyone else is. Yeah. So you are currently on the fifth floor. Uh, you are aware Manny's that on the we established floor. Manny is on the fourth and Ollie is on the, Ollie's second. On the second. I'm going to make my way down to the fourth floor, not knowing that what's going on with Manny. Cool. Okay. We've established that there are uh, at, so there are security doors at both ends of the hallway. One leads to the elevator, which is the main way that you go in and out of the uh, uh, of the dormitory block when they take you in and out. Uh, and there's also a smaller security door at the opposite end, which we've established goes to the emergency stairwell. I think with the key card, I'm going to try for the emergency stairwell. Cool. Okay. So, uh, Jackie, you uh, you swipe the card at the uh, at the stairwell uh, the electronic lock clicks open uh, you you know open the door into uh, this uh, very industrial cinder block stairwell uh, with a red emergency light flashing to light up the light up the space uh, you go down one floor swipe the key card again, open the door, and you look down the corridor and you see all the way through the opposite security door into the open elevator doors. You see a security guard pull somebody down, slam them onto from like 
climbing out of the elevator, slam them onto the ground, and two other security guards rush into the elevator to uh, attempt to knock this person out. You catch a glimpse of colorfully dyed hair uh, on this figure that they have pulled out hey. of the elevator ceiling. It There's looks the familiar button. to you. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna give a shrill whistle and yeet one of the stun batons at uh, one of the guard's heads. That's the one that's about to bring their own stun baton down on Manny. Okay, you are going to have to, you are way down this corridor, so you're gonna have to okay. run up to do that. Yeah, sure. Uh, Never as, run. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm panicking now. Like I, I see Manny being yeah, surrounded as you, by as guards. As you rush up <laughs> yeah, and, that'll prepare do it. For this, <laughs> and prepare for this throw and chuck it, Oh God! Uh, you have this strange taste in your mouth. No. <laughs> out here, uh, and you're hearing that hiss again. You know the, the mm -hmm. one you blocked up in your cell. Jackie. Yes. I am gonna need a roll to resist the effects of fear gas. I yeah. Think cool. Sure. Fuck. Yeah. You're looking at a roll with your prowess rating. Thank God. <laughs> Uh, I've got three in that. Gimbo okay. energy. Let's go. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Come on. Uh. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> uh, uh, one and two threes. Okay. Uh, so with a three as the highest, you can pay three stress to resist this. Yeah, um, uh-oh. <laughs> if I do that, I will quite literally only have two pieces of stress left. I said it was a limited resource. <laughs> or you could choose not to spend the stress and not resist. It's like day 1.5 in prison. <laughs> you can't break All right. already. Fuck me up. We've been here for a year. It's like yeah, day 366.5. Fuck me right. up. Jackie, you chuck yep. this stun baton and your vision starts to blur as you feel the effects of this gas overcoming you and you feel your heart rate start to skyrocket. Funny you should say that my heart rate is literally at like 110 right now. Yeah. Well... That's probably a good point to cut to Ollie. Ollie. I'm gonna kill yeah. you all. I'm gonna kill you yeah. all. <laughs> we join you a few minutes earlier in your cell on the second floor of the medium security wing of Arkham Asylum. You, like everyone else, experience this power outage, the red emergency lights come back on, and you hear the announcement over the PA system that Dr. Jonathan Crane has taken control of the facility. What do you do? Are we are, are we rolling to see whether we know who that is, or do we just, can we choose? If you would like to see, uh, uh, if you have like a valid reason that you would specifically know, go for it. Uh, if you would like to leave it up to chance, you can roll for it. Um, I know. Well, theoretically, we may have run into them, into him in the past, but I don't know. If that was associated with an actual name, so you know, I'll, I'll roll for it. Um, that's a study roll. Yeah. Yeah, so study fortune roll. All right. Um, so I have uh, I have no pips in study. That is two fours. Two fours. Okay. Um, so I think you... Uh, that's a mixed success. Um, so I think you have heard of Jonathan Crane, but not Scarecrow. Mm. Um so I feel like, uh, having been at uh, Arkham Asylum for some time, um, 
you either... Do you think that you had direct interaction with Crane, or do you think that he is a former Arkham doctor who you heard about? I think that there is, if I may be so bold, I think that there is a um, a wing or a section named after him. You know, in honor of his achievements. Yeah, yeah. Before stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. So, yeah. Let's and say... I think, like, so I think there's maybe a picture of him up. Um... Uh, maybe the other doctors here like to pretend that uh, every that you know he died. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. Like if you ever asked about him, you know they they just quietly say like, "Oh no, he's not around anymore." Yeah. Just real tragedy. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, okay. Yeah. So you are Ali. Uh, I think um, fairly. Uh, fairly familiar with uh the dr jonathan crane uh or or the the crane wing uh which is where um let's say that's the area in the main building with things like treatment rooms and interview rooms uh Mm -hmm. where you know patients are actually treated in the main building that is the crane wing and you happen to have observed, uh, you know, a, a, a plaque and a photo uh, saying that it is uh, named for one Dr. Jonathan Crane in honor of his accomplishments in psychiatry. All right. So, so that's I think what you Ollie... know. Somebody who used to be a doctor at Arkham. Yeah, Ollie is, um, has spent the last little bit putting a proper handle on this spork shank. Um. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, D D sporkerining it. Um. You gotta get that sporkerine stank off of there. Yeah, yeah, gotta get that sporkerine stank off there. Clean it up a little bit. Give it a good grip. Um. And is uh, probably I think just kind of sitting there, or lying down on uh, uh, individual cells. Yes. Yes. In the medium security wing. Yeah. So lying there, just um. Just staring, thousand yards staring into the ceiling when uh, all this goes down. Cool. So, yeah, you hear, uh, you know, you hear some commotion outside. Uh, You hear guards shouting back and forth to each other. Uh, Some hubbub in the the corridor. Um, And then you hear that hiss of something uh, making its way out of the vent in your room. What do you do? Oh, I hate that. Um, Yeah, so I think Ollie just kind of uh, sits up really quickly. And does it smell like anything? Does it uh, it smell like gas? Like like gas gas? Like natural gas? Or is it... uh... Uh, It does not. No, it, it, it definitely doesn't have that, like, uh, that like sulfur, you know, rotten eggs, like, you know, gas warning smell, but there is sort of like a sharp, like metallic acrid tinge to, to the air. Like ozone or? Yeah. Yeah. Like, like ozone, but a a little, a little bitter. It's very, very evocative. Smells like how ibuprofen tastes. Um, you know what? It doesn't not. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it, similarly to Jackie, my first instinct is to jam the vent. Uh-huh. Um, is there, is, is that possible? Yeah. I think similarly to, you know, you can try the same tactic that Jackie took. Uh, you can try something what? else. Throw. Eh. Yeah. Sheets just sort of ceiling? like ram some, some pillows and sheets into the grate. Um, you know, if you have some other method, you can go for that. Yeah, I think that's the best I got before we're operating with a, an asylum cell. Yeah. 
Um, I think, yeah, Ollie's gonna like kind of um, brace on whatever furniture is available to try to get as close as possible to make this easy and just start shoving um, sheet into the uh, into the vent to try to jog uh, to jog it uh, to try to jam it up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and you're able to do that, uh, and you're you're able to, to jam that into uh, into the vent. What's your next move? What's what are the guards doing? What, what's going on there? Uh, they are uh, they're scrambling back and forth uh, a little bit. Uh, a couple have run past your your cell. They seem to be uh, headed for the elevators. That seems to be sort of the standard lockdown procedure is get the uh, get the active guards off of the uh, dormitory blocks. How how often does a lockdown happen since we've been here? I mean, we've been here for a minute. Mm. Yeah, good Given question. Arkham's notorious reputation as a rotating door. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think there's a decent chance. Let's have a fortune roll about it. All right. Uh, what type of fortune? Is that just a straight D6? Yeah, I think just a straight D6. It'll be a two. Okay. Uh... I think with a two, uh, as a uh, as a failure, this is the first time you have actually seen a uh, a real lockdown uh, of of any sort at the asylum. I think they don't. You have not been here long enough, and they don't rotate. They don't like do their drills frequently enough that you've mm-hmm. actually hit one, hit a drill yet, and you haven't hit a real one. So you don't actually know what the procedure is. You are just sort of inferring from what's going on. DC Universe OSHA is going to be very interested in this. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. So I think Ollie's. Um, so my first instinct is that if this has not happened before, then there is a chance of escaping. And that is the only thing that matters anymore because we're not getting out. Nobody's coming for us. Let's not think about that too hard. Let's just focus on escaping. It's what it's what I know how to do. Yeah. Um. And uh, yeah. So the. Ooh, shit! I'm gonna fucking sell. This sucks. Um. Do any of the guards run by close? Uh. Yeah. Can Ollie try to reach yeah, through the door and grab port. one of them? There is glass. Uh, oh, it is glass. Blocking the bars. doors. So the only way that you would be able to do that is if you want to try to like smash through the glass and grab them. Yeah, you know what? That that works. Okay, cool. So you you can Let's, attempt uh, to smash ship. through the security gra- glass and and grab one of the guards as they as they go past. Um. I think this has to be similar to to Jackie's move. Uh, you know, s- violence is skirmish. Skirmish is violence. Yeah, it's called so, using your body as a weapon. <laughs> yeah. So let's have a let's have a skirmish roll from you. Um, I think. Uh, I think this is slightly desperate. So I'm gonna take you down a die for that. Okay. But you can get back up if you want to push yourself or take a devil's I, bargain. I, what is the devil's bargain, just out of curiosity? Devil's bargain is going to be... Uh, you can get the... Uh, you can get the die, um, but uh, your makeshift block on the vent is going to uh, collapse, and it is going to flood this room with more gas than you would otherwise have coming into the room at once, uh, and you're just going to get hit with a huge wave of this stuff. Yeah, I'll take it. Okay. Uh, and that can happens I, regardless of success or failure. Can I also push myself? No, so you okay. get to choose Devil's Bargain or push yourself. I'll take it. I'll One take or the it. other. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So you get the extra die. Okay, see what happens. back up to regular. This is fine. 
and the fancy dice comes through with a six. Okay, great. Uh, so, Ollie, you, uh, you, like, we're back, you look at the door, and you just shove your hand, crashing through the, uh, the reinforced security glass of this, uh, cell door window as a guard essentially runs directly into your open hand and you were able to grab them by the shirt or the throat or whatever you want with a six. Uh, yeah, I think by the, probably by the throat. Um, yeah, okay, great. So it's you like grab all these yeah. ice fishing here, just right? Smashes their hand. Yeah, through this the hand ice. just comes out and the guard <laughs> right into your hand. You grab them by the throat. What do you do? Cool. I'm going to stab him a bunch of times in the neck. Okay, great. You got that. You got your spork. <laughs> um, I don't think this, uh, I don't think this requires an extra roll. You already shoved your hand through a thing of glass. Um, I am going to uh, reset the guard clock for this floor. Um, he could just use the glass that's broken to stab him more. <laughs> I right, love we are how going to... Ed and Manny were just so fancy using finesse and skill, <laughs> and Ollie and Jackie are just rip maim tear kill. <laughs> yeah, I got my face beaten by a lunch tray. <laughs> using this... my body as a weapon is not something. <laughs> this Manny is what they call party two. balance. I'm just saying, Manny is 5'2". Look, Ollie just wants out. Yeah, so Ollie, you <laughs> pull this, We've been here for pull too this long. guard back in by by the throat, uh, and we just see you shoving that spork through the through the window. The dramatic uh, blood splatter on the glass. Um, yeah, but I, no actual, but no actual right, imagery. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, we so, we hear. We hear one gnarly sound effect, and uh, and the guard slumps uh, in your hand. However, you are getting a big whiff of that gas, and I am going to need you to roll to resist the effects. Okay. Uh, Ollie, as previously discussed... One of uh, the interesting things about you is you have some modifications to your person made by your former boss, one Poison Ivy? Is that it? Did I have that right? That That is, uh, yes, that is correct, uh, mm, David. Yes, yes. Wow, guys. Wow. <laughs> uh, and uh, amongst those is a heightened resistance to poisons. So, that unlike correct, yes. everyone else who is resisting with sheer physical prowess, uh, I'm going to ask you to resist with your resolve. So, I will say that's significantly worse, just so you know. And I'm okay with that. But well, I'm going to push myself because I would like more than one dice. Uh, you cannot push yourself to resist. A resistance roll is just a straight column. All right, and we're gonna hope the we're we gonna hope the, that the stone boy. We're gonna hope the stone boy does it again. All right. The stone boy does not do it again. That is a two. Okay. So if you want to resist this, you will have to pay for stress. I will do that. Okay. Great. Mo not um, mo mostly because I feel like I have to for the character's integrity. All right. So, uh, Ollie, uh, you, uh, you feel, you know, you in inhale this gas. You are clearly not inhaling just air anymore as you hold this, this slumped over guard, uh, through the, through the window here. But mm -hmm. you can, uh, you don't, you can feel your, your body taking it in. Uh, and at least for the time being, you have the capacity to convert this uh, this poison uh, into a into a 
less volatile form. And, uh, you know, maybe you just say a, a quiet little thank you to uh, your good, good friend. Great boss. Your good friend and great boss. Yeah, put That's that on it. a mug. <laughs> I actually do think we should. That's the kind of merch we can actually sell. So maybe we should do that. <laughs> um. Wow. Yes, I still really want Goth Bucks merch, though. Um. Uh. Yeah. yeah we so can work on I that. think Ollie, like, kind of feeling this, uh, feeling the 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 mod of the like kind of magical genetic modifications that have been, uh, um given to them by poison ivy uh kind of dealing dealing with and absorbing some of this um they uh they're gonna reach reach through while still holding onto a s strip of like the like the cuff of the cur the yeah shirt like collar. the like the shirt collar of the the guard's uniform and then yep. reach down and fumble around and find a key okay cool um yeah i don't think there's any reason that uh, you wouldn't be able to do this, um, but um, what I am going to throw at you is uh, you do hear a uh, a uh, uh, like shout uh, from the other guard uh, at the at the other end of the hallway, like uh, hey, Jones, come on, we got to get down to the security post, get a move on. So. They will be looking for this guard in a moment. But you okay. snag that security card. Yeah, so I'd snag the security card, Ali. Um, try, uh, can I open my cell, cell door with that? Yep. Yeah. Does that and is going to drag the guard inside. Um, mm -hmm. Size-wise, compared to... Um, cool, compared yes. To, Love compared it. Compared to Ollie, how how's that uh, outfit work out? Fortune roll! Okay. Do I use the same dice? It's giving me mixed results. We're going to use one of the fuck dice. Great. Five. Five. Mixed success. It's a little big, but it uh, it mostly fits. Uh, you know, somebody who was looking very closely would, you know, see that you're going to have to roll up the cuffs uh, and and sort of like kind of over tighten the, uh, the stab vest uh, in in a way that is maybe a bit much, um, but uh, you know, on uh, you know, on just cursory glance, this will fit you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, just uh, shove shoves the body underneath the pallet, or the uh, is it like the drop down sticks? Is it the drop down kind or the stick out of the wall kind? Or do we have freestanding? Are we fancy and we have freestanding beds? It is. It's a. Uh, it's sort of a concrete pallet that's built mm -hmm. into the side of the wall. Okay, yeah. yeah but there there is rolled. clearance underneath it if you want to roll the the guard under there. Yep. Just going to scoot under there and um and uh yeah, gra grab what what Ollie's going to grab whatever they can and start heading uh looking for a way out. Great. Uh all right, you have uh donned the uniform of an Arkham Asylum security guard. Uh, that includes with a staff all the accoutrements. Yeah, so uh, so you have a stab vest. Um, we will uh, call that an armor that you can mark. Uh, you have a um, a taser uh, and a baton, uh, which we previously established. You can mark that on your gear to carry to continue carrying those. Mm -hmm. um, you have the pass card uh, for this wing, which you already got, so you're good there. Um, and. I think uh, for extra shenanigans, I will give you part of this guard's outfit is a uh, helmet with a riot visor. Amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Just flips that shit down. Get 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 all open. Ocean's Eleven up in this bitch and um, just uh, starts jogging for the uh, jogging for the exit. Um, okay. Do now. I know where everybody else is? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think the previous role sort of established collective knowledge for anyone, uh, and for everyone. So, you are aware, Manny, uh, two floors up, floor four, Jackie, three on five. 
The setup is the same as the other corridors above and below you. One security door goes to the stairwell. The other security door at the other end of the corridor goes to the transfer elevator. Uh, the guards, okay. the two other guards, are uh, they see you come out. And, you know, again, we're in this dim red lighting here. And uh, one of them says to you, Hey, Jonesy, come on! We gotta get a move on. What are you doing messing around with the cells? Um, I did not hear this person talk and, um, and, uh, just, uh, just, uh, do a very, like, my bad, my bad kind of vibe. Don't actually say anything. Just like, uh huh. Just like dramatically body jog. Yeah, body language and just jog up. Okay. And you're headed towards them. Yes. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, Let's have a... <laughs> you are trying to sway them into believing that you are somebody you are not. Uh, so let's have a sway roll it's here. It's chaotic. There's red lights everywhere. Yeah. I mean, you have... you. I will give you an extra die uh, for the general chaos, the disguise that you have on. Like, the, yeah. You, you definitely have advantages here. Okay. Um, and you can always push yourself, take a bargain, whatever you want. Oof, that bar that first bargain hurt. Just out of curiosity. Mm-hmm. Devil's bargain. Um if uh if you want the extra die here, uh you are not going you don't have this knowledge as a as a character, but as a player uh currently Manny is uh two floors up in a lot of trouble. You are not gonna be able to get there in time to intervene in whatever's going on up there. Okay. These guards like these guards are gonna player. get in the elevator and they're gonna go down in the other direction. Okay, they're going down? Yeah, so you'll you'll have to you know, you'll have to backtrack, you'll have to get back up there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you don't will, know that uh, that's an issue. I'm going to not but... take that bargain. I'm going to not take that bargain. I will push okay. myself for a second dice. All right, two stress. Um, Add another die. What could possibly... Yes? No, no. No, 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 no. What's what the highest one, doing? Hopper? <laughs> a one? <laughs> Wow. Well, I just literally Man, started to say what could possibly go wrong. Yeah, I, I heard paid you. too right. stressed for well, that. You said uh, what could possibly go wrong. Oh, we're walking away from this with trauma. Oh, Snake eyes well, and trauma. I've got three more stress until I had trauma already. Uh, yeah, Ollie, you you jog up. Uh, you get close. The other guy, uh, one of the other guards, looks. Uh, looks you in the eyes through the through the riot shield, says, "You're not Jonesy. Who the hell are you?" And immediately grabs you and slams you arm bar up against the wall next to the elevator. And I'm going to resist to, that. Uh, yes, you are going to take one harm for this. He slams you hard. Okay. One box of one level one harm. So, uh, right. yeah. But Resist you have armor, with... right? Yes, you. you can mark. You can mark the armor to free the resistance. I'm gonna want to save that armor though. Back. Okay. Because is it okay. is this a prowess roll? Uh. Yeah. Uh. Well, no, actually. Hmm. Interesting. 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 Uh. You were resisting the consequence of the last roll, which was he clocked you. So this is actually with resolve, um, because yeah, what you are resisting is the consequence of getting discovered. Okay. Um. Can I not resist and just use? Yeah, that if you armor? want. Because yeah. that's a big difference. There's, there's, that's the difference between three dice and one dice, and I only have three stress left, and I'd like to at least be helpful at some point to somebody. Um, so yeah, I will mark, I will mark the armor for, uh, for my stay up best and my little, my little cosplay riot gear bullshit. 
Okay, great. Which, in this case, interestingly, is functioning uh, not as physical armor, but as armor to protect your disguise. Uh, so what do you say to this guy uh, when he when he slams you up against the wall that convinces him that, uh, no, you are in fact, at least, if not Jones, a guard who is supposed to be here? Um, Ollie very strangled, um, uh, just, uh, just says, oh, not Josie, not Josie, I'm Briggs from, from cell block C. I just got choked out by, by someone in a cell. Oh, jeez. Okay. Sorry, man. I'm really jumpy. I'm really fucking jumpy, okay? I don't know what the hell's yeah, going on. The- What's Sorry, and he, he pulls back and he, he sort of like starts smoothing down your down your front. <sighs> Sorry, man. Sorry. I don't know what's going on here. Okay, uh, there's there's guys coming on the loudspeakers. Uh, they, we we got to we're going into lockdown procedure, but uh, I, I ain't getting nobody on the radio. All right. All right. We got to go up and we got to check the other blocks. Okay. Yeah. I gotta, I, I'm, I so, I'm sorry about that, pal. I'm really... I'm, oh, nah, you, you'll be fine. Just walk it off, all right? Come on. Come on. Yeah, sorry about that. that's what you always say. Yeah, take you're, a lozenge. The, and he, uh, <laughs> he, he like, takes a... He, like, takes a, a Ricola out of, out of his vest and plops it in your hand. Uh, and then ushers you into the, uh... Ushers you into the elevator. Uh, and the, the other, the other, uh, guard, she, she turns and she's like, Okay, what the hell is that? We can't get jumpy like this, okay? Everybody's gotta cool it and calm down. Remember your training. Just stay frosty, okay? All right? Ain't nothing gonna happen if we just keep together, keep our wits about us, all right? And uh, she punches the uh, the elevator button uh, and you start heading up. Let's return to Jackie. Jackie. Hi. Yeah. You have just hurled so- mm-hmm. this stun baton uh, at the cluster of guards who are about to attack Manny Quinn, and your vision blurs. Mm-hmm. And your heart rate skyrockets. Jackie, what are you afraid of? What do you see? Give me, you gave me a lovely long time to ponder that. So here's what happens. I think almost as soon as Jackie opens up the door from the security stairwell into this into the fourth floor. Her vision was already starting to go a little wonky, but she just wasn't focusing on it, especially seeing that flash of blue hair and Manny spiked her panic already. And that's when the weird, the weirdness like out of the corner of her eyes kind of solidified. Um, everything tunnels for a brief second. And uh, Jackie finds herself having pushed past that door and suddenly finding herself in the Gotham City Courthouse. Mm-hmm. And there's a moment of confusion that's yeah. mixed with this panic because she knows you she just saw- You run through these doors and you are now in a large, long room. It seems strangely long. It see- yeah, it, it's, it's weird. It's, there is... are just rows and rows and rows of benches. And there this are is these not big- the way giant tall windows and this harsh light illuminating the space streaming in and you can see at the far end this just massive edifice of the judges stand and she's been in this room before um but not like this there's something very wrong here she initially realized that this couldn't be right she just seen Manny. We were just in Arkham and that is starting to get a little fuzzy and it's fading in the back of her mind and um, she that moment of confusion gives way when she sees on this impossibly distorted courthouse 
there's Harvey Dent. And not Two-Face. This is Harvey, the DA. And she's confused for two seconds before she realizes that her hand has like been like reared back, um, her whole arm. And she like looks, but she's no, 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 this, this isn't, this isn't right. This, this, um, and she sees in her hand when she like looks back and looks up, there's a vial of acid in it. Oh no, I didn't, gosh. I, I didn't do this. I, it wasn't me. I. No, 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 no. You have to get away from me. You have to get away from me. You. But he doesn't get away. No, no, he no, no, no. He looks you straight in the face as you hurl no. this vial with all your strength in his direction. And he's so far away. He's so far away. But the throw goes and goes and goes. Jackie, give me a roll. I think yeah. as you are making a very long row here, I think we're looking at your maneuver rating. Interesting. Yeah. I do have one in that. Yeah, I have one point in that. All right. Give me a roll with maneuver. I am going to say, is this a desperate situation? I think possibly. You're going to get one well, then down it's... for that. Then it's negative. All right. Push yourself. I know you're doing great on stress. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm really not. And the player in me doesn't want to do it. But Jack, he's severely compromised. We could talk about that. Bargain. Devil's bargain. What is the devil's bargain? That is very terrifying. David is in full evil mode, and I'm scared. Uh, I mean, I'm dull. I think the devil's bargain I can see the glee on his face is that you can get the dice but you are going to be stuck in this vision for longer than you otherwise would be perhaps much longer oh god oh god I think I should take it because I know what this aim is really for in the real world, <laughs> but Jack doesn't. But I think Jackie made the initial throw not seeing this vision, so I have to take it. All right. She was trying to protect Manny. All right, well, this gas is hitting you and it's hitting you hard, but you get that done. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> It's a six! Oh! <laughs> it was worth it in the end! <laughs> Jackie, you watch this vial tumble oh. through the air, the fluid in it sloshing end over end, light glinting off the glass from these tremendous, too tall, warped windows and you see it connect Harvey Dent. He turns his face slightly to the side and it smashes and the acid washes over one side of his face in a uh, wave. And Jackie just starts There's so screaming. much of it coming out of this tiny vial. There could never have been that much, but it's it's everywhere. Oh, can I take a little liberty with this? Yeah. Instead of that wave of acid that's like now crashing, like I think flooding like back towards her and around this courtroom, I think in her brain, since it's now getting worse, she's just seeing blood and all of the bodies of all of the people she has ever killed for Falcone, for Harvey, for herself, she's haunted by them. And now they're there. I'm and I think in, within that, she also sees you guys. How many bodies is that, Jackie? It's a lot. It's a lot, Maddie, it's a lot. It's not it's a small a big number. courtroom, and it's pretty full. And it's Manny. getting bigger. You me. are uh, on the ground in the elevator 
Uh, this guard is about to bring this baton down, and suddenly, out of nowhere, whipping end over end, whacking into their hand uh, a- another baton, uh, and it whacks that baton out of their hand. The three guards turn. You see Jackie silhouetted in the red emergency light halfway down the corridor. Uh, and at first you are incredibly relieved and then she screams in horror, in anger, in grief. You don't know what to make of this. What do you do? Um, you said they all turned to look. Uh, yeah. Manny is immediately going to, uh, well, and especially driven by Jackie's blood curdling scream, it's Manny's turn to go feral spider monkey on these guards. All right. What do you do? Uh, she's going to get on the back of one uh, and try to swing her legs around and kick another. She, she's just going to fight. She's going to fight. Okay. Let's have a skirmish roll. Uh, okay. You are, uh, they definitely have a numerical advantage on you here. Okay. So we're gonna call that a desperate situation. You're down one. Um, and if I push myself, I'll yep. mark two stress. Okay. Okay, two stress okay. and you're that's, up one more. That's fine, I can do that. Okay. All right. A five. Five, mixed success. Uh, okay, so we're going to uh, we're going to trade harm here. So uh, you are able to, uh, oh, I actually have to start two different clocks here. We have a different one here. All right, so uh, you are able to uh, kick out uh, as you sort of somersault to your feet, uh, taking down the one guard who just had the stun baton uh, whacked out of their hand, uh, and they go slumping down, crashing into the side of the elevator. You are on your feet. Uh, you can grab one of the stun batons if you want, uh, but the, uh, the two other guards are uh, looking at Jackie, uh, look back at you, look at Jackie, look back at you, uh, and, uh, one of them says to the other one, well, go get the other one! And, uh, the, uh, and this one squares up, uh, to face off against you in the elevator, uh, and the other one runs for Jackie. What do you do? Um, well, I don't know which in order in which we want to resolve this, but what Manny's going to do is grab that stun baton and do exactly pull a Jackie and throw it, try to catch the guy running towards her, but then like also physically scuffle with uh, the the guard okay. here, which of course in Manny's Manny's world is a very dramatic way of physical scuffling because she's not just punching people. That's not where her strength lies. So it's probably like a little flip and like, you know, Sonia's move in Mortal Kombat where she does the flip, grabs the guy around the neck and then tosses him over. Yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah. That's what we're going to go for. Why not? All right. <laughs> Skirmish roll again, but the odds are even now. So you're flat to start. Sweet. Okay, right. You know what? We're all we're all on the trauma train today. Let's push ourselves. I've still got two. I've still got room for two more. I've got one more push oh, in me after this fine. one. You're fine. You're fine. Ooh, two sixes and a five. Okay, ah! two sixes. Uh, critical success. You absolutely destroy this guard, Manny. So you do this move, you you flip, you grab them and like a just like a precision feat of acrobatics. Uh, mm -hmm. Just slam their head into the side of the elevator, take them down uh, and land in a cool three point, uh, yeah, three point pose. Jackie. 
from your perspective, uh, you are in this courtroom filled with bodies. Harvey Dent is standing there in front of you at the other end. Uh, his side of his face uh, smoking and he whips around to you. You see the face of Two-Face and he looks you dead in the eyes and he says, how could you do this to me? Before he rushes at you. Which oh is God. Where gonna cut it. Oh God. Ah. You're evil. Ah. It was teamwork. <laughs> Y'all, that was so fucking it was, you know, it was a concerted effort between David and the dice. <laughs> uh, Together they fucked us. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's going to be our episode for this evening. Thanks for joining us on Manapot Studios for Streets of Gotham. Streets of Gotham runs Mondays at 8 p.m. Eastern. We have a new episode every other Monday, and in between, we're doing reruns with live chat where we'll be around to talk with y'all if you want to uh, have some more chit-chat. Um, you can also go over to youtube.com slash Manapot Studios to watch some of our past games, including the original Escape from Arkham series that inspired this whole long-form campaign. Uh, once again, I have been David, your GM. You can check out my tabletop RPGs at dvb-8.itch.io, including In the Dark, the simplified multi-setting version of Blades in the Dark, that we've been playing here tonight. And I'm also on Instagram and Twitter at Brunel Brutman. With that, I will throw it over to my um, uh, hopefully not too traumatized cast to give their outros and plugs. Uh, let's start with Maddie. Uh, hello, and also goodbye. Um, I have been Maddie. Um, you can find me online uh, at Cellar Tater um, on Instagram and Twitter, um, where I uh, sometimes post art and uh, will be posting some art of these characters. Um, I'm sure you saw them on our lovely holding screens. Um, but yes, uh, thank you for watching. Um, and uh, I've been playing Ed, and uh, we'll see how this uh, how this resolves. Everything will be fine. It'll all be fine. It'll be fine. Everything's mm -hmm. going to be fine. Yeah, it'll be fine. Marcy. No. I <laughs> 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 Hi, I'm Marcy, and this is a game that we played. Um, no, you can find me around the internet under the username Experimental Madness. Uh, I am a writer and an editor. Um, I'm not on Twitter. But technically, I do have a username on there. I just never use it. But you can find me there under the username Marsful if you're so inclined. Um, yeah, we've got a lot of stuff coming up with the Manapod Studios channel in addition to Streets of Gotham reoccurring every other Monday at 8 p.m. Uh, this was, you know, uh, due to the holiday, we rescheduled a little bit. But normally on Tuesdays, we have Flights of Fandom at the same time at 8 p.m. Um, and uh, next week, we'll be kicking off our one-shot month um, we're going to be doing a really fun one shot next Tuesday set in the Disney's Rescuers universe. So I'm sure it's going to be wacky, lighthearted, uh, amazing fun. Um, we've got a couple other games coming up uh, for July. I'm not yet going to be teasing out what's coming for the rest of the summer, but uh, it's going to be good. Uh, so stay tuned. That's the teaser to the teaser. <laughs> um, you know, and uh, check out Invisible Sun, uh, The Hole in the World, uh, every other Sunday, 4.30 uh, p.m. We're on hiatus this month, but we'll be back in August, and now's a great time to catch up. Uh, in addition to catching up on Hole in the World, you should be catching up on all of our shows, which uh, are all on our YouTube channel under the same name, Manipod Studios. So check it out, join the Discord, keep up with the calendar, and if you ever want to play with us, get in touch. Heck yeah. All right, let's move on to Pooja. Hello, everybody. I have been Pooja. You can find me on Twitter at Pooja. 
and at Pujabberwocky on all other platforms, including Twitch, where I have very recently started streaming random comfort games and other Miss Marvel watch part reaction watch parties. So you can hear me yell there. And then also I play Mario Kart with friends and I yell about that. It's, it's a lot of yelling. It's a lot of fun. Um, and besides that, uh, my Wednesday game, my alternate Wednesday game is on hiatus this week. And so you can find me on Saturday over on Total Party Kiss, where we will be playing Strange Hungers, a 5e horror campaign with an all queer table and wonderful, spooky, safe horror. It's, it's just, it's a great time. Um, and then, oh, this Friday, I will be uh, on a panel for virtual horror con, horror, I can never say that word without saying like horror, horror con, where um, a, one of the players from that game, the DM and I, among some other wonderful people, are going to be on a panel called Knife in Our Hands. And it's basically about reclaiming horror as a genre to tell queer and other marginalized voice stories. So uh, you can find details for that over on my Twitter. So please do come out. It'll be a good time and uh, catch me here next time. Awesome. And last, but absolutely not least, Hopper. It's okay. I'm comfortable being least. Um, <clears throat> what's up? Still me, still Hopper. Um, and you can find me on the whole in the world, like Marcy mentioned, though we are on hiatus this month as well. I, I believe I'm in the, I think I'm in the rescuers down under flight. Technically I made all that happen. It was really just me screaming into the void and hoping that people answered me, but um, we've got some cool shit coming up for one shot month. Uh, and uh, this Thursday, uh, if you want to check out um, my channel, if you want unambiguously evil bullshit, um, I have four of the sweetest, kindest people I know playing four of the most monstrous characters I've ever had at my table um, uh, uh, with uh, Dark Visions, which is on uh, at uh, twitch.tv slash um, the underscore legend tree, legend underscore tree. Um, some bastard took the one without the underscores. Monstrous. Um, that's, they're the real monsters Your nemesis. here. My nemesis. Um, but uh, yeah, like uh, swing by for that. And I'm going to try to wrangle together uh, some drinking and small, tiny rat shenanigans in the near future here too. So uh, you can find my social media under the legend tree as well. Other than that, I don't know, be gay, do crime. Just because just because Pride Month is over, it's, that just means it's Wrath Month now. And also I think, I believe it's dis Disability Pride Month as well. Yeah, that's right. Punch your local Nazi. Awesome. Always. All right. Then with that, I will thank all of y'all for joining me, uh, everybody in chat, all the viewers, and I will see you next time. Same bat time, same bat place.